Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am going to be your trainer for this AZ500 Azure Security Engineer Certification course. We are at episode 3. In this video, we are going to learn everything about Azure AD Identity Protection. Let me show you on a high level what are the topics we are going to touch on this video. We will start with what is Azure AD Identity Protection. How can you access these risk events and how can you define these user risk policy and sign in risk policy? We will dive deep into what is Azure AD conditional access and how you can set up your own CA and what are these conditions and where are these conditions applied to. And finally, we finish off with access reviews. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So what is Azure AD Identity Protection? Identity Protection is a tool that allows organization to accomplish three key tasks. First is automate the detection and remediation of identity-based risk. Then it does investigate risk using data in the portal. And the third task is exporting the risk detection data to third-party utilities for further analysis. Identity protection uses the learnings Microsoft has acquired from their position in organizations with Azure AD, the consumer space with Microsoft accounts, and in gaming with Xbox to protect your users. Microsoft analyzes 6.5 trillion signals per day to identify and protect customers from threats. Risk detections in Azure AD Identity Protection include any identified suspicious actions related to user account in the directory. The signals generated that are fed to Identity Protection can be further fed into tools like conditional access to make access decisions or fed back to security information and even management SIM tools for further investigation based on your organization's enforced policies. So let's first understand what is identity protection policies. So let's first understand what are the three default policies available for identity protection. Azure AD identity protection includes three default policies that administrators can choose to enable. These policies include limited customization, but are applicable to most organizations. So first, let me show you how you can access these policies. Go to your Azure AD and under security, click on identity protection. And this is where you can see these three policies. All the policies allow for excluding users such as your emergency access or break glass administrator accounts. So first let's talk about Azure MFA registration policy. Identity protection can help organizations roll out Azure multi-factor authentication using conditional access policy requiring registration at sign-in. Enabling this policy is a great way to ensure new users in your organization have registered for MFA on their first day. Multi-factor authentication is one of the self-remediation method for risk event within identity protection. Self-remediation allows for users to act on their own to reduce help desk call volume. The second policy we need to understand is sign in risk policy. Identity protection analyzes signals from each sign in, both real time and offline, and calculates a risk score based on the probability that the sign in wasn't performed by the user. Administrators can choose to block access, allow access, or allow access but require multi-factor authentication. If risk is detected, Users can perform multi-factor authentication to self-remediate and close the risk sign-in event to prevent unnecessary noise for administrators. And the third type is custom conditional access policy. So administrators can also choose to create a custom conditional access policy, including sign-in risk as an assignment condition. Let's understand what are risk events. The majority of security breaches take place when attackers gain access to an environment by stealing a user's identity. Discovering compromised identities is not an easy task. Azure Active Directory uses adaptive machine learning algorithms and heuristics to detect suspicious actions that are related to your user accounts. 
each detected suspicious action is stored in a record called risk detections. There are two places where you can review these report. One is under Azure AD reporting and the second is under Azure AD identity protection. Let me show you how you can access this in Azure AD reporting. I'm going to go back to my primary Azure AD. You can go under this Azure AD reporting to risk to find the risk detections, which is part of your Azure AD security reports. In addition, you can use identity protection risk detection API to gain programmatic access to security detection using Microsoft Graph as well. Currently, Azure Active Directory detects six types of risk detection. First one is users with leak credentials. When cyber criminals compromise valid passwords of legitimate users, they often share those credentials. Second type of risk is sign in from anonymous IP addresses. This risk detection type identifies users who have successfully signed in from an IP address that has been identified as an anonymous proxy IP address. Third type is impossible travel to a typical locations. This risk detection type identifies two sign-ins originating from geographically distinct locations, where at least one of the locations may also be atypical for user given password behavior. Another risk type is sign-in from unfamiliar locations. This risk detection type considers past sign-in location, which is IP address, latitude, longitude, and ASN, to determine new or unfamiliar locations. Next risk type is sign-in from infected devices. This risk detection type identifies sign-ins from devices infected with malware that are known to actively communicate with a bot server. And the last risk type is sign-in from IP addresses with suspicious activity. This risk detection type identifies IP addresses from which a high number of failed sign-in attempts were seen across multiple user accounts over a short period of time. Please note that while the detection of risk detections already represent an important aspect of protecting your identities, you also have the option to either manually address them or implement automated responses by configuring conditional access policies. So let me show you an example of a user risk policy. Identity protection can calculate what it believes is normal for user behavior and use that to base decisions of their risk. User risk is a calculation of probability that an identity has been compromised. Administrators can decide based on their risk score signal to enforce organizational requirements. Administrators can choose to block access, allow access, or allow access but require a password change using Azure AD self-service password reset. This is an example of an image shows the configuration of user risk policy applied. With the information provided by the risky user report, administrators can find which users are at risk and have, have had risk remediated or have had risk dismissed as well. This can give you more details about detection, history of all risky sign-in and risk history as well. And what are the actions administrators can do? Administrators can then choose to act on these events and decide to do reset of the user password, confirm to the user that user account is compromised, or they can simply dismiss the user account, or they can simply dismiss the user risk, or block user from sign-in, or investigate further using Azure ATP. Next, I want to show you an example of a sign-in risk policy. Sign-in risk represents the probability that a given authentication request isn't authorized by the identity owner. For users of Azure Identity Protection, sign-in risk can be evaluated as part of a conditional access policy. So what are the conditions which sign-in risk policy support? First, it support location and client app and risky sign-in. With the information provided by the risky sign-in report, Administrators can get real-time and aggregate risk levels associated with sign-in attempts. They can find out the detection type triggered, MFA details, device information, application information, location information, etc. 
All right, so now let's go and understand what is Azure AD Conditional Access. Conditional Access is the tool used by Azure Active Directory to bring signals together, to make decisions and enforce organizational policies. Conditional Access is at the heart of the new identity-driven control plane. Conditional Access policy is really a next-generation policy that built for the cloud. It's able to consider massive amounts of data as well as a contextual data from a user sign-in flow and make sure that the right controls are enforced. So before we go ahead and understand more about conditional access, I want to help you understand what is identity as a service. Identity as a service is the new control plane. First, let's understand what is a control plane. In a switch or router, the control plane is the part that controls where the traffic is to go and but it's not responsible for the movement of the traffic. The control plane learns the routes which is either static or dynamic. The part responsible for moving the traffic is the forward plane. And this is an example of a figure which shows the simple switch diagram. And user identity is like the control plane because it controls which protocols the user will interact with, with organizational programs that user can access, and which devices the users can access, and what programs. Identity is what helps protect user and corporate data. For example, should that the data be encrypted, deleted, or ignored when an issue occurs. So by using the conditional access policies, you can apply the right access control when needed to keep your organization secure and stay out of your user's way when not needed. And these conditional access policies are enforced after the first factor authentication has been completed. And the conditional access is not intended as an organization's first line of defense for scenarios like denial of service, which is a DOS attack, but can use signals from these events to determine access. Please note that Conditional access is an effective way to enable access to resources after specific conditions have been met. Let us now understand what are these conditions. First, let me show you where you can find your conditional access. I'm on my Azure portal. Go to security and click on conditional access. By default, you can find a couple of policies. You can click on new policy. By default, Conditional access comes with six conditions, user or group, cloud application, device state, location IP address range, client application, and sign-in risk. You can use the combination of these conditions to get the exact conditional access policy you need. Notice that in this example image, the conditions determine the access control to allow access to the application or is it to blocking the application? With access control, you can either block access altogether or grant access with the additional requirement by selecting the desired controls as well. Please note that the users and groups condition is mandatory in a conditional access policy. In your policy, you can either select all users or specific users or groups. Now let's understand what is access reviews. Azure AD Access Reviews enable organizations to effectively manage group memberships, access to enterprise application, and role assignments. User access can be reviewed on a regular basis to make sure only the right people have continued access. And you might wonder, why are access reviews important? So before I explain why are access reviews important, let me show you where you can access it. You can go to search box and type in identity governance and select that. Azure AD enables you to collaborate internally and with users external to your organization as well, such as your partners. Users can join groups, invite groups, connect to cloud apps and work remotely from their work or personal devices. You can use access reviews for some of the use cases. So let me explain these use cases. The first use case where you can use access reviews are if you have too many users in privileged roles, access reviews are going to be a best fit. 
it is a good idea to check how many users have administrative access and how many of them are global administrators. And if there are any invited guests or partners that have not been removed after being assigned to do an administrative task. The second use case is when automation is infeasible. You can create rules for dynamic membership on security groups or Office 365 groups. But what if the HR data is not in Azure AD or if users still need to access after leaving the group to train their replacement? You can then create a review on that group to ensure those who still need access should have continued access. Another use case is when a group is used for a new purpose. If you have a group that is going to be synced to Azure AD, or if you plan to enable a sales management application for everyone in the sales team, it would be useful to ask the group owner to review the group membership prior to the group being used in a different risk content. Another use case is business critical data access. For certain resources, it might be required to ask people outside of IT to regularly sign out and give a justification on why they need access for auditing purposes. Another way you can use access reviews are to maintain a policies exception list. In an ideal world, all users would follow the access policies to secure access to your organizational resources. However, sometimes there are business cases that require you to make exceptions. As the IT admin, you can manage this task, avoid oversight of policy exception, and provide auditors with proof that these exceptions are reviewed regularly. Next use case is asking the group owners to confirm they still need guests in their groups. Employee access might be automated with some on on-premises IAM, but not invited users. If a group gives guest access to business sensitive content, then it's the group owner's responsibility to confirm the guests still have the legitimate business need for access. The last use case is have reviews record periodically. You can set up recurring access reviews of users at set frequencies such as weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, and the reviewers will be notified at the start of each review. And reviewers can approve or deny access with a friendly interface and with the help of smart recommendations. All right, so that concludes identity protection lesson. In the next video, we are starting episode 4. In episode 4, we are going to learn about enterprise governance. So I will see you on the next video. Till then, take care.